Hi, welcome Wings, Wheels and Wires, your channel for tech and travel. All right, so I try to keep my channel as pol politics free as possible, but sometimes politics does affect the electric vehicle world. Um, and we're gonna discuss that a little bit. See, the, there, each party has its benefits and drawbacks. I'm not taking sides on either one. Important point though is the Democratic Party, one of their advantages is that they're a definitely more green party, right? Hi. And because of that, they're definitely much more electric vehicle friendly. And this has been the case with this current administration. Back on August 5th, President Biden had a meeting with American automobile, automobile manufacturers to have a discussion about the future of electric vehicles in our country. And he had representatives from GM, from Ford, and from Stellantis. And for anyone who doesn't know what Stellantis is, it's a multinational grouping of automobile manufacturers that uh, in, happens to include uh, Chrysler, which is why they um, were included in there. The funny thing is, guess who wasn't there? Tesla. No, 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 no. Now, this isn't breaking news. This happened back on August 5th, but I've been thinking a lot about this because on the surface, one might go, Great. Well, Tesla's dominating the market. Elon Musk is a billionaire getting pretty much everything he could possibly want. Uh, why would it matter? Oh, great. He got snubbed. But the reality of it is this isn't just a snub against him. Really, it includes all people who are interested in electric vehicles. And so the question is, how is this a slap against everyone if all they did was exclude uh, Tesla? Well, first off, you have to understand the importance of Tesla. Right now, the people who are haters against Tesla are going to sit there and go, oh, they have build quality issues. They still haven't really nailed down the automobile manufacturing process yet. The fanboys of Tesla are going to go, it's the most advanced vehicle on the planet, you know, and they're both right and they both have a good point. The true value of Tesla isn't the cars. It's the market disruption that they create. And how do I mean this? Well, first off, we're going to, in order to understand that, we have to understand the history of electric vehicles. So we're going to start with history time. So if you're finding this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. And while you're at it, you can hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new content from me. And please, I would really appreciate you subscribing. All new subscribers, I give a shout out and I'll be giving one at the end of this video. So stay tuned. Very first thing to understand is Tesla did not invent the electric vehicle. As a matter of fact, the electric vehicle isn't even a new invention. Pop quiz. When do you think the electric vehicle was invented? What year or what decade? The reality of it is the very first electric vehicle was invented in 1832 by Robert Anderson. This was a very crude version of the electric vehicle, but it was invented then. Fast forward to 1870, Sir David Solomon created a light electric motor vehicle, but the batteries were still really heavy, okay? Going from there to the turn of the century, there was a tremendous amount of research being done on how to improve batteries, just like we're doing right now, all right? And they were trying to improve the battery technology, improve the capacity of the battery so that they could make them lighter. Unfortunately, the discovery of oil in Texas now started getting people interested in internal combustion engines. Um, so a lot of this energy that was being directed towards studying batteries was now starting to be directed towards internal combustion engines. And it eventually uh, resulted in a vehicle. In 1893, Charles Edgar Direa and his brother Frank created the first gas-powered vehicle. Um, now, if you're doing the math on this, the first gas-powered vehicle is 1893, but the first electric vehicle was 1832. So electric vehicles have been around for 71 years before this ended up becoming, this gas vehicle came along. Unfortunately, this started to be the beginning of the end of the electric vehicle because uh, Ford started building his Model T, which came off an assembly line. So it created a very cheap production process. And unfortunately, his Ford Model T was available for $650 at the time that was a lot of money of course 
as compared to an electric roadster, which would come in at about $1,750. So this huge price difference, people chose the cheaper option, right? If you're barely able to pay your bills and you're not, and you're scraping together and you have a choice between spending $650 or $1,750, it's an easy choice, right? Now by itself, I'm not really bothered by this piece uh, because um, it's a free market system. This is the way it works. The, uh, may the best per, best competitor win, right? Um, unfortunately, this isn't the way the situation stayed. You see an entire infrastructure then started to be built around gas vehicles, service stations, repair facilities that knew how to work on ICE vehicles, dealerships, even the current dealership model isn't to make money off the sale, it's to make money on the surface after the sale, right? So this whole infrastructure is built and this infrastructure doesn't want to change, right? Um, even in 1996, GM actually created an electric vehicle called the EV1. And they released it for three years. They only allowed it on a lease. And then when the lease was up, they required the owners to give it back. There were a lot of people who wanted to buy the vehicles. They wouldn't allow them. And what they actually did is um, when they brought them back, they destroyed them, right? It actually oh, took no. a court order um, from a bunch of these owners suing to be able to have the cars not be destroyed and get the option to keep them. Now, why, if a vehicle is so popular and so many of the owners want to keep this and the demand is there, why would you destroy the cars? There's actually an entire documentary based on this called Who Killed the Electric Car? I really recommend you watch it so you can get a bigger and deeper understanding of this, right? So years have progressed on and on. Electric Electric cars have shown up here or there, but generally they're an afterthought. Uh, then you can, until the point where you even came up with a concept called compliance cars, as regulators started saying, you must have an electric car. They build one, but the performance was really horrible. The range on the 2014 i3, it was 85 miles if you got the Rex version anyway as compared to a 1996 EV1. So in all those years, so little progress was made on range because they weren't really trying to do it, right? Again, we're just checking the box. Um, and this would honestly still be continuing all the way up until today if it weren't for this one little company that almost failed a couple times that all of a sudden started chipping away at their market share. And this is, of course, Tesla, right? Make no mistake that if Tesla didn't exist, a lot of the improvements you've seen in electric vehicles over the last couple of years wouldn't exist. It is Tesla's taking away uh, market share from these manufacturers and they want it back. So now they're starting to compete with Tesla. They're starting to chase Tesla to get the, these vehicles, to get your dollar as opposed to giving it to them. Now it's kind of an interesting thing because this, this new, regeneration of electric vehicle ex excitement, enthusiasm, you'd think we've done really well. But truth be told, we haven't. Back before, the, uh, back in the heyday of electric vehicles, back in the late 1800s, all the way up until 1910, one third of all vehicles on the road were electric. And understand that the other two thirds were drawn by horse, okay? So this is how prolific EVs have become. Even today, in 2021, less than 2% of all vehicles on the road are electric vehicles. That being said, obviously taking the market leader and including it in that discussion, including it in that move forward is absolutely vital. And this is where, when I say they didn't just snub Elon, but they snubbed all of us, is because not including Tesla in this discussion, not including Tesla in this plan is going to slow us down. It's going to hinder us. It's just a reality. Now, why? Why Why is this happening? Well, one thing you might consider is because Tesla's pushing ahead of legacy manufacturers, maybe want to make it more fair and even for them to be able to keep up. But I don't think that's the case because you see, there's one other participant in that uh, meeting that President Biden had with the autom automobile manufacturers. And that was the UAW or the United Auto Workers Union. All right. They were the other participant. 
And apparently this administration, while it is pro-EV, it's also extremely pro-union. I'm not for or against unions. I'm not speaking in, in that realm. There are great arguments for, for and against them. All right. The thing I want to speak to is that this is why Tesla is getting excluded, right? And, and this isn't just a theory. This is a reality because even if you look, if you research the intended uh, tax credits, they're actually going to bring back the 7,500. This is the plan so far is to bring back the 7,500 for all vehicles, right? Um, which would, which is great. Tesla then gets that benefit, which they've been making sales beyond their capacity to keep up without that credit. So getting it added back in will be nothing but a win. But they're also proposing another, I believe, $4,000 or $4,500 on top of that for vehicles produced by unionized companies, which would be the other three participants that showed up to that meeting. Chrysler, Ford, GM. They're all unionized. So they'll get an additional money on top of the 75. Add to this that the newly appointed director of the NTSB is somebody who has been historically very critical of Tesla, particularly their um, their self-driving features. And they work you know, for a company or are associated with a company who identifies themselves as a competitor to Tesla in the self-driving realm. So there's a lot of angling against the company in politics or in the government right now. Um, so all of that, I think, plays into them not being invited to the table. All right, so that's great. Now you know all this background. What does it matter? What do you do with it? Well, first off, you could, if you choose, reach out to your political representatives. And if you, ha if you have an issue with this one way or the other, bring it up to them. Let your voice be heard. Now, other things you can do is a concept of voting with your wallet, right? Now, I'm not telling you everyone needs to run out and buy a Tesla to show the government. But that $4,000, $4,500 incentive would really compel people to buy one of these uh, union based company cars. And if that's the car you want to buy, go for it. If you want to support unions, go for it. If you like that particular car, example for me, I didn't buy a Tesla. I bought an i3. Um, I bought it because it, it matched my needs and my price point. Buy the vehicle that's right for you. I think that I would encourage you to not be led on a hook for that extra $4,000, right? I think that you should buy the vehicle that makes the most sense for you and do your research. If it isn't a Tesla, that's great. If All right, right now I'd like to take an opportunity to shout out my latest subscriber, Elmer Edson. Uh, thank you very much for subscribing. Anyone else, if you want to get a shout out, you got to do two things. One, of course, you have to subscribe, but then two, you also have to make sure that you are visible. Um, otherwise, I don't get to see who it is and I can't give you a shout out. All right. Well, thank you very much for watching it this far if you have and have an outstanding day.